Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and all God's people say, Amen. So, any of you who are tennis fans will know that the French Open is currently underway, which is one of the most important tennis tournaments in the world. <clears throat> and I don't know if you remember or not, but I remember, distinctly remember, three years ago when Japanese tennis superstar Naomi Osaka surprised the world by withdrawing from the tournament. She decided to withdraw after she was fined $15,000 for refusing to participate in a press conference. She said, the truth is, uh, is that I have been suffering long bouts of depression and I have a really hard time coping with that. Her decision led to a barrage of criticism. Pierce Morgan called her a petulant little madam. An Australian sports journalist said, the immaturity of Naomi Osaka leaves me speechless. But other folks are more caring and compassionate and empathetic with their struggles. Tennis star Serena Williams said, I wish I could give her a hug because I know what it's like. The Bible doesn't say much about depression or mental, issue, mental health issues as we understand them. But what is considered demon possession in the Bible is often what we would consider mental health challenges and issues these days. The Bible, God's word, does speak of both suffering from a variety of afflictions. From the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, the shortest gospel, and the first one written, <clears throat> Jesus meets people in need, and Jesus responds to real human need with compassion and action. <clears throat> Jesus feeds and heals and lifts people. He meets and heals physical needs, and there is a body and mind and soul connection. Physical healing and need meeting is also emotional and spiritual. Because as a great book says, um, the book, the body keeps score. There is a connection between all that. <clears throat> and Jesus in the Gospels is always on the side of life, even when it means challenging the status quo, as we hear today. Jesus cures those who are sick. He casts out demons. He cleanses a leper. He restores sight to the blind. He heals a paralytic. He launches his ministry early in the Gospel of Mark by saying, the kingdom of God has come near. Then Jesus shows that being freed from affliction, being freed from any oppression, is a sign of the kingdom of heaven. In our Gospel lesson today, we have two short stories, which I encourage you to take home and read and pray through this week. In the first story this morning, Jesus and his followers, his apprentices, which is what we are also called to be, are walking through the grain fields on the Sabbath, which for Jewish folks like Jesus was and is sundown Friday through sundown or sunset Saturday. His hungry followers pluck heads of grain <clears throat> when a group of religious leaders called Pharisees criticized Jesus by saying, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So Jesus, being very Jesus-y, tells a story. He tells a story about David and his companions breaking the laws of the temple to eat bread when they are hungry. And then Jesus says, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. Jesus wants him to know that the laws of the Sabbath are created to benefit God's people. When these laws are not beneficial to helping those created in God's image, they can be broken. Helping others takes priority over following religious rules. Putting skin on God's love is more important than religious legalism, more important than religiosity. <clears throat> Myself and uh, a few other folks in the local restaurant look out for a local homeless man, and he panhandles enough most days to stay in one of the Roach Coach motels on Washington Avenue. And we give him some cash and toiletries. Um, and I talk to him, and we pray for one another. Um, he's not in good health. His legs are swollen and purple, which is an obvious sign of some serious medical issues. He's not someone who's going to the doctor. He's not someone particularly pleasant to look at. He is who he is. But he is a child of God who would not and does not harm a soul. And he says to people who are the most mean-spirited to and say the worst things to him are folks leaving church on Sunday morning. That's why it's often said that the largest cause of atheism is Christians. Some Christians, not you. 
From the second story from Jesus this morning, which I encourage you in your mind's eye to imagine witnessing playing out, Jesus enters a synagogue. He sees a man with a withered hand, and he asks the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good or to do harm <coughs> on the Sabbath, to save or to kill? They don't answer Jesus. He looks at them with anger, the only time the word is used this way in the New Testament. Jesus is angry and grieved by hardness of heart. We've probably all been there when we've been hurt by someone we care about. We angry and grieve the loss and damage to the relationship at the same time. Jesus says to the man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. The man stretches out his hand and he is healed. The kingdom of God, the kingdom we pray, come every Sunday, as seen in doing for others, saving lives and helping and healing folks, even on the Sabbath, even if we are in a hurry. Jesus makes clear that his mission is to heal the sick and cast out demons by the power of God. <clears throat> that means that in his culture and context, and the manner it translates to our modern context, is that Jesus helps and wants folks to be restored to physical, emotional, spiritual, psychological health, to wholeness. Jesus is interested in human flourishing, beloved community, and the common good. Jesus didn't just heal folks to live in isolation. Jesus sees he healing as a sign of the kingdom of God, entering our daily human life in whatever manner that healing appears. Jesus is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, of course, not everyone agrees. After Jesus heals a man with the withered hand, the Pharisees, the legalists, go out and conspire with the Herodians, the Greek Jews who are hostile to Jesus, and against Jesus, who is also Jewish, about how to destroy him. Keeping the Sabbath was a boundary issue in the Jewish culture of the time. It was a tradition, part of the identity of God's people. But like all traditions, it can lose its original intent and impact. A day of rest is beneficial to us and for us. We need space to be human beings and not just human doings. So for me, after church on Sundays, I go home. I have lunch with my wife, I take a nap, um, and I spend Sunday just being, um, powered down, sometimes talking to family in other parts of the country or on the phone. And that is why on Saturday, I take Saturday off. That's my day off, with the exception of weddings and emergencies. I've learned in life that no is a complete and healthy sentence, and boundaries are healthy. Jesus warns us not to use Sabbath keeping as an excuse for being rude to the person checking us out at Publix, or leaving a cheap tip, or failing to help someone in need. In fact, Jesus gets angry when we show hardness of heart. He doesn't get angry for the puppy sins, for the little things we do and don't do. He gets angry about hardness of heart. Jesus reserves his most passionate ire in the Gospels for religious legalists who talk the talk but don't walk the walk, for those who practice religiosity. Jesus gets angry when people pray pretty but live meanly with hearts of ice and stone, cold and indifferent to the suffering of others. When people claim to drink in Jesus but spit out hate. When people boast of being people of faith but rely on fear. When they claim they're Christian nationalists, which is neither in the spirit of Jesus, not biblical and not patriotic, and ignores the Sermon on the Mount. Those who preach a God of abundance but not the gospel call for sacrifice, servanthood, servant leadership, humility and compassion for the beaten up and beaten down. <clears throat> Jesus calls us to follow him and to be moved out of our comfort zone. The Jesus of the Gospels changes things in terms of our mental, spiritual, and emotional health. The Gospel of Mark and our stories this morning make it clear that Jesus wants to heal us and save us from those things that can hurt or destroy us physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. When we respond to the Gospel and follow Jesus, we choose, as it were, between two kingdoms. When we choose the spirit of the law over the letter of the law, when we live in the kingdom of God, we choose the feeding of hungry people, compassion for and care for those who are lost and broken and lonely and hurting in any way. We choose grace. We choose life. <clears throat> we choose to be people who bring healing and help into the world. We choose to be people who do good. When we're able, as we're able, for whom we're able, we choose and follow Jesus, the way of love and compassion. 
the way of the we over the me, the way that tells us when one member suffers, all suffer, the way of goodness and character and virtue and grace and mercy and warmth over hardness and coldness of heart. Jesus wanted healing. He wanted health and wholeness for everyone. And that's what the word salvation means. We are called to follow his example. As I shared with a young couple who we married here in the church last night, Layla and Ben, if you want to feel love, do love. If you want to feel love, do love. So as I get ready to pull this together, I would share with you the hungry disciples, the man with the withered hand, a crowd full of sick folks, they all found help and healing in Jesus. They were saved by the one who brings power and love into the midst of our daily lives and living. The one who wants to love and heal. The bomb in Gilead for all God's people. From ordinary folks to superstar athletes wrestling with mental health issues. Jesus came to bring life and to defeat the ways of death with the word of life. Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? I'll share by closing that when we follow the actual Jesus of the Gospels, the actual Jesus of the Gospels, the one who put people first, we seek balance between taking care of the self and taking care of others. This is important because we are experiencing a mental health crisis in our country, which is also a spiritual crisis. As those who follow Jesus, we have skin in the game as we do the work of healing and helping our divided and isolating and hurting world. When we follow Jesus, we can step away and slow down to practice self-care. Jesus says, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For me, that means daily prayer time. That means working out daily, eating better, um, seeing my VA therapist once a month, seeking spiritual direction, um, and on it goes as a way to make, maintain health, mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual health, wholeness. I can't give what I'm not getting. We all need this. That's why I was proud of Naomi Osaka. She was not willing to destroy her mind, body, and soul just to win a tournament. She spoke a truth, a hard truth, to help others. Jesus wants us saved and healed and helped. Jesus wants a bomb in Gilead for anything that seeks to harm or destroy. You know, after 20 years of war, the military, or at least veterans groups, are taking these issues seriously due to the effects of a long war um, whose effects were not discussed ahead of time. They're never discussed ahead of time. The politicians make the decision to go to war and the people who go to war suffer the consequences, especially in a country where the military-civilian divide is larger than ever. And that's why so many veterans suffered moral injury um, during the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. We asked the question, what was all the sacrifice for? only to leave the Taliban, evil personified, still in power. So we talk about these issues. We talk about the effects of war, not only on ourselves, but secondarily, those suffering post-traumatic stress, our families, who often suffer much more than we do. Anyway, so three years ago, back when all this was happening to Naomi Osaka, one person trying to be a game changer was a man named Edward Jones. He was an assistant athletic director for Baylor College Football. And he said this, he said, as a black man, I understand the taboo that mental health has been and is for our community. I tried to be an example of handling your mental health so all of our student athletes can see its benefit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus came to save, to heal, to make whole, to be that bomb in Gilead. Jesus placed in caring for others first. Jesus asked the question, do you want to be well? I pray the answer for all of us, all of you as individuals, and for us as a faith community, for those who follow Jesus is yes. I want to be well, and we want to be well. Amen.